On a scale from 1 to 10, how much do you agree with the statement, I'm able to begin a task and complete it regardless of boredom or distractions? So, you can give this video a skip under these two conditions. First, you rated yourself a 10 out of 10. Secondly, you don't plan to watch this video to the end. By not watching this video to the end, you never know which piece of advice might be the change in 2024 for you. So, this just simply says that you are not serious and you are not ready. Hello friends, I'm a 22-year-old student, SMMA agency owner, a growing YouTuber trying to expand on my personal brand by publishing content almost at a daily basis and a bunch of other side hustles like drop shipping, etc. Obviously, I won't be able to do it without a strong discipline. So today, I'm going to be sharing my tips with you. In this video, I will be giving you detailed analysis, including descriptions, examples, and even recommendations for the six takeaways from the book Discipline Equals Freedom by Jaco Wickling. So it is a guide focusing on the concept that discipline is the pathway to freedom. Wickling, a former Navy SEAL, uses his experiences and insights to provide a framework for overcoming obstacles and achieving goals through vigorous self-discipline. First, don't rely on motivation, rely on discipline. So motivation is unreliable. It's just an emotion that comes and goes. So discipline, on the other hand, is a very unwavering factor. The book emphasizes not to depend on motivation for taking action. Instead, it encourages building and relying on discipline to achieve your goals. So discipline ensures you do what you need to do even when you don't feel like it. So just take a moment and think about it. How many times have you like procrastinated because you have a lack of motivation? How many times have you skipped your gym session or have you like skipped your work because like you don't feel like doing it? But I can tell you that a disciplined person would never do that. So one example can be a student may not be motivated to study. However, if they were to cultivate a discipline, they will study regularly regardless of their emotional state. And this discipline ensures that they are consistently working towards their academic goals, even on days when motivation is low. So I strongly recommend you to develop routines and habits that support your goals, independent of your emotional state. Create a structured plan and stick to it, regardless of whether you are feeling motivated or not. So this could involve setting a specific time for a specific task and learn to create an environment for work and rewarding yourself for sticking your plan. So understand that discipline, not motivation, is the key to long-term success and growth. So by focusing on these takeaways and integrating them into your daily life, you can enhance your self-discipline and drive meaningful changes in your personal and professional life. Secondly, overcoming procrastination so recently i have read a book and in this book there is a phrase which is one of my favorites of all it says that procrastination is the assassination to all destination isn't that beautiful so procrastination is a common barrier to achieving goals and the book emphasizes the importance of initiating actions immediately to overcome procrastination the notion of waiting for the right moment, the perfect moment, or accumulating enough knowledge before starting something is simply a misconception. The right time to start is always right now. So procrastination leads to missed opportunities and increased stress, while taking immediate action propels you towards your goals and enhances productivity. So one example can be, consider someone who wants to start a fitness journey but keeps postponing the first workout session, waiting for the right time or the right gym membership. Each day of procrastination only adds to the inertia. So what is inertia? Let me teach you a new word. Basically, inertia is something like inactivity, the tendency of not doing anything. So basically, it will cause inertia and makes starting even more challenging because you get heavier and if you want to run, it will be more difficult for you to run. So, I strongly recommend you to combat procrastination. Adopt a mindset of immediate action. Break your goals into smaller and more manageable tasks and start with what can be done right away. Don't wait for the perfect conditions because 
they simply don't exist. Every small step taken today will accumulate and lead to significant progress over time. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Don't just say wait, do it right now. Thirdly, the person you can control. So focus on your self-improvement because you simply can't control others. Only your own actions, reactions, and mindset. You need to really understand that the only person you truly have control over is yourself. People might manipulate you, but it's your mindset that sets you apart from others. Your reactions, your emotions, and your decisions. So understanding and accepting this can lead to a significant personal growth and a more proactive approach to life. By concentrating on self-control, you can improve your responses to challenge situations, make better decisions, and ultimately drive positive changes in your life and environment. One example can be, imagine you are in a team meeting and a colleague presents an idea that you strongly, strongly disagree with and find it quite stupid, for example. Instead of reacting impulsively or trying to control the narrative, you take a moment to listen, control your response. You listen actively, ask clarifying questions and offer constructive feedback. So this action not only helps you maintain a positive team dynamics, but also position you as a thoughtful and composed leader. I strongly recommend you to learn to invest energy in self-development and things within your control. Avoid wasting time on external factors beyond your control. Practice mindfulness and self-reflection to better understand your emotion and what triggers. When faced with challenging situations, take a step back and really assess your immediate reaction. Ask yourself if whether is there a more productive way to respond. Focus on actions and thoughts that you can really control, such as your attitude, your efforts, and your openness to learning from every situation. Remember, the only person you can control is yourself. And by mastering self-control, you can navigate life more effectively. Fourthly, default aggressive. So default aggressive refers to a mindset of taking initiative and being proactive in facing challenges. It doesn't mean being aggressive in a negative or harmful sense, but rather adopting an assertive and determined attitude towards achieving goals. It's about not waiting passively for things to happen, but actively seeking out for opportunities, confronting problems head on, and taking decisive action. This approach fosters a sense of responsibility and can significantly impact your ability to achieve success. One example can be just imagine a project manager sees potential obstacles in the project timeline. Instead of waiting for the issues to manifest, they proactively gather the team, discuss potential solutions, and implement preventive measurements. So this approach not only mitigates risk, but also demonstrates leadership and a commitment to the project's success. I strongly recommend you to cultivate a mindset of preparedness and proactive action when faced with a challenge. Don't just shine away from it. Learn to analyze the situation. Uh, excuse me. Anticipate potential obstacles and develop a plan of action. Learn to be assertive in your decision making and take ownership of the outcome. Remember, being default aggressive is about channeling your energy positively to take charge of situations and drive the results you want to see. Fifth, make it enjoyable. So the concept of making it enjoyable revolves around the idea of finding joy and satisfaction in the process of discipline and goal achievement. It acknowledges that while discipline often involves hard work and perseverance, incorporating elements of enjoyment can significantly enhance motivation and sustainability. So by aligning tasks and goals with personal passions or by finding ways to make the process more engaging and enjoyable, individuals like yourself are more likely to remain committed and enthusiastic about their endeavors. This approach not only makes the journey more pleasant, but also increases the likelihood of long-term success and personal fulfillment. 
So, for example, consider a person aiming to improve their physical fitness. Instead of seeing exercise as a strenuous obligation, they choose activities they genuinely enjoy, like dance classes, hiking, or even team sports. They can also create a motivating playlist and set regular milestones to celebrate progress like cheat day or whatsoever. So this approach transforms the fitness routine from a chore into a source of enjoyment and personal growth making it easier to maintain discipline and consistently. I strongly recommend you to identify aspects of your goals or tasks that you can genuinely enjoy or find it fulfilling. If certain tasks seem tedious, try to integrate elements of fun or align them with your interests. For example, if you're working on a project that requires you for extensive research, choose topics that really interest you or create a comfortable and inspiring workspace celebrate small wins and allow yourself to enjoy your journey towards your goal remember when you make the process enjoyable maintaining discipline becomes a rewarding experience rather than a burden lastly mental contrasting mental contrasting is a cognitive strategy that involves contrasting your fantasies about desired future with reflections on your present reality induces the necessity to act to put it simply compare where you are right now with where you want to be. This can strongly motivate you to take action. In a study, participants who contrasted their current state with their desired goals were more likely to take responsibility for their own action and work towards their goal. So when you set your goals, visualize both the future you desire and the obstacles you might encounter. Mental contrasting can help you increase motivation and discipline. For example, imagine an aspiring author who dreams of publishing a best-selling novel. They engage in mental contrasting by vividly picturing the success of their book launch, the positive reviews and impact their words might have on their readers. Then they reflect on their current situation, a half-finished script and challenges in finding a consistent writing routine. So this stuck contrast between their dream and their current reality really motivates them to establish a disciplined writing schedule, seek feedback, and address the practical steps needed to bridge the gap. Strongly recommend you to utilize mental contrasting as a tool to enhance your discipline. Start by visualizing the success realization of your goals, then take a step back and assess your current situation honestly. Identify the specific obstacles you face and this reality check will not only ground your aspirations but also spark a sense of urgency and a clear understanding of the actionable steps you need to take. Embrace this contrast as the catalyst for action and allow it to guide your planning and execution process. Remember, mental contrasting is not about this encouragement. It's about fostering a proactive, problem-solving attitude that really paves your way for real progress and achievement. This takeaway emphasizes the power of discipline as a transformative force. By integrating these principles into your daily life, one can navigate challenges effectively and move towards a more focused, purposeful existence. And this is all for today's video. Thank you all for staying to the end. Kindly like this video if you have learned anything from it. And comment any questions you have. Have a nice day, Ali. See you next time.